Welcome to the podcast Beyond Bits and Bytes, brought to you by Bistech Global. Welcome to you if you have listened to our podcast before, and also welcome to you if you are new, if you are a new listener and this is your first time. Beyond Bits and Bytes podcast is designed to raise your awareness of the latest developments in technology. Its aim is to share new thinking and discoveries and to help you become more productive as an individual, professional, or an entrepreneur. Bistech Global is a technology solutions provider, a Microsoft Gold partner. Our services include software development, cloud migration, quality assurance, and data engineering. My name is Mervyn Silva. I have worked in the IT industry for the past three and a half decades, both in public sector and private sector within UK, designing, developing, and implementing technology solutions to improve service efficiency, profitability, and customer experience. During our last episode, we met Prisni Masuk, a man who had a serious heart attack at the age of 38, in the middle of his life and peak of his career, which left him devastated and having to rebuild his life and take stock of his priorities. During this episode, we are going to meet Prisni again, going to look at how he fought back and turn things around and rebuild his life and ended up doing things he never thought would be possible for him. Welcome back, Prisni. Thank you, Maureen. Yeah, thanks for having me. Prisni, you are an IT professional who has lived in Sheffield, UK for many years. 14 years ago, in the year 2010, age 38, you had a serious heart attack which many people don't survive. And those who survive, the quality of life is very poor. Many of them disable wheelchairs or in medication most of their life, rest of their life. Thanks to the timely medical attention, here, we, here you and I are talking today. Following this heart attack, you didn't just survive, you thrived, which makes us curious and your in story interesting. So, Tell us what happened. Who did what to keep you alive talking to us today? Yeah. Um, I'm sure you have listened to my uh, story in the first episode. So uh, let's continue from uh, where we stopped last time. Yes. Um, uh, so when uh, when I um, had the heart attack, um, I was actually, um, you know, uh, shocked, devastated. Um, it came out of the blue. Um, uh, at first, I felt actually I lost everything. Yes. Um, at the same time, I felt fortunate to have survived, um, as you just mentioned. Yes. Um, yeah, I went on to make a quick recovery thanks to the excellent care and support um, I received here in Sheffield in the UK uh, from the uh, NHS hospital and uh, especially the the cardiac uh, rehab uh, unit. Yeah. Uh, in in the UK, uh, um, usually when someone um, uh, you know uh, ha um, have a cardiac uh, issue, everyone must uh, uh, attend a cardiac rehab, uh, which is compulsory, which I did as well. Uh, yeah. That was actually uh, my turning point. Uh, Having uh, going through the uh, cardiac rehab, uh, it gave me the confidence. Mm. Um, it helped me to get my um, uh, confidence back and stand on my own feet. Mm. They were very supportive. Uh, if not uh, those people, uh, I don't think I, I would have um, actually uh, been in this position today. Brilliant. And uh, I remember you telling us, but uh, for the benefit of the listener, tell us, before the heart attack, what your body weight was, and after being through the cardiac rehab and uh, gym, uh, what was your fitness level like and your weight was? Yeah, um, 
I was uh, 95 uh, kilos uh, to be precise when I had the heart attack. Mm-hmm. Um, I used to be very workaholic, uh, uh, never uh, thought about my uh, health and uh, fitness or well-being. I hardly actually went out even for a walk. Uh, I, I couldn't even run uh, 50 meters. Only time if I um, run, it was um, only to catch the uh, bus or the train. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was so um, unfit, uh, mainly because of the uh, the uh, priorities. Um, uh, as I said, uh, I used to focus on my uh, work always. I used to work from 8 to very late in the evening. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, at the um, end of uh, year, having mm-hmm. the heart attack, uh, I was able to bring down my weight to 59 kilos. Right. That, so, that is more than uh, 35 kilos uh, I managed to reduce. Very impressive. From 95 to 59, you reduce within six months, is it? Uh, it took about a year. I mean, uh, my uh, doc- doc- doctor said that it's not a good uh, thing to reduce the weight all of a sudden. So right. I, um, you know, uh, managed to do it uh, gradually. Okay. And that's very impressive. So the difference was before this, before the heart attack happened, you used to work long hours, sit, eat, get on with it, didn't have paid much attention to your health or no exercise, hence the weight gain. Now, this was an alarm call. You had no choice. You got on, was very disciplined, and exercise and exercise. And uh, in in a year, you reduce your weight to uh, fifty nine kilos, and you are a lot lot fitter. You said as a result. Correct, now, yeah. yeah, you were going to gym regularly, working long hours to build up. What were your aims? What were you aiming for? You had some priorities. In this, in going to the gym, and you wanted to build up certain things. Tell us. Uh, absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, the um, the heart attack I, uh, I had was a wake up call. Um, yeah. Very first, um, I didn't know actually uh, wh- uh, what to do. I was mm. sort of a bit lost. Um, mm. So at the same time, I thought, okay, uh, let's fight with this disease. Um, I did. Um, I was determined that uh, I will. Uh, never give up for this disease. I want to fight back. That yeah. was the moment actually I thought, okay, uh, let's begin. Uh, yeah. Then I took up uh, running, um, yeah. which I never tried before. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh, very first I was nervous. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if I remember, I had to take one step at a time uh, yeah. and uh, build my strength up uh, again. Uh, the biggest thing was actually getting over the mental barrier of yeah. having uh, had a heart problem and worrying about what I should do or I shouldn't do. Yeah. Because um, I had no idea about um, um, the recovery, even though uh, the cardiac rehab my, and my doctors actually gave me some advice. Uh, it helped me, but uh, I did a lot of uh, research my own. I uh, went on to read a lot of books about yeah. recovering from uh, heart attacks, uh, mm. getting uh, um, he- uh, healthier and fitter, etc. Yeah, um, so I must say that uh, it was very challenging, but my de- determination to get fit kept me going. Yeah, so you are very determined, and for the first time, you you are learning so much about heart and heart health. And this time, the fight was personal. You were determined not to be beaten by that. That was correct. Uh, yeah. How you're progressing. Brilliant. Tell us, uh, to begin with, you were running, uh, you were at the gym doing a lot of cardiac exercises, uh, treadmill, rowing machine, uh, that type of indoor, uh, indoor exercises. And suddenly you decided that uh, you started running outdoors. How did that happen? Yeah. Uh, so it was uh, about. Um, after about 10 months, uh, yeah. I had a heart attack in 2010 May. So yeah. after three months, I went through the cardiac rehab. It took about six months. Then I moved to another gym uh, where um, uh, pretty much every day uh, I used to go to the gym and work out for uh, two hours. 
uh, you know, uh, cycling on the treadmill, a rowing machine, and all sort of other um, exercise equipment. Um, I I was able to actually reduce my weight uh, like every month um, like two kilos. So yeah. at the end of uh, the year, that is around 2011 um, uh, April, uh, yeah. I was feeling much better. Uh, yeah. I was feeling uh, very uh, I would say I I had actually regained my fitness. Uh, so uh, I was getting bored uh, going to the gym and doing same exercise again and again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it was uh, uh, the spring um, uh, in Sheffield. Uh, yeah. It was beautiful time to get out uh, and, you know, um, uh, with some fresh air. I thought, yeah. okay, let's do some uh, uh, outdoor running, running. Uh, outdoor, yeah, outside, yeah. That's how mm. um, I started running. I, I first actually started walking a lot. Uh, mm. I'm really fortunate to live in uh, Sheffield, which is very close to um, something called Peak District. Um, mm. It is a very beautiful uh, mm. place, a lot of hills. Um, uh, so I started um, walking a lot. That's how I uh, built my stamina. First started mm. walking, mm. then gradually uh, uh, moved to uh, running on proper trails. Mm. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, something called park run came into your life. Correct, yeah. Um, so um, uh, I wanted to run, uh, as you said, you know, uh, on the roads, and uh, I, I knew. Uh, I have seen a lot of uh, runners uh, on the road, but I had no idea uh, how uh, we had to run in, in terms of, um, you know, safety, etc. So I uh, started Googling um, uh, running in Sheffield, running clubs, etc., running groups. Then park run thing came uh, top of uh, the uh, search um, uh, list. So yeah. I thought, uh, okay, just uh, give it a try. Uh, I joined the park run uh, for the benefit benefit of uh, uh, people who doesn't know about park run. Park run is a timely five kilometer run which uh, takes place every Saturday at nine o'clock all around the world, mainly here in the UK um, and the US, Australia, New Zealand, a lot of countries. Uh, it is free. Um, um, Joining actually the park run, or I would say discovering uh, the park run, uh, was the um, the one of the turning points. Mm. It gave me, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, opportunity for me to uh, uh, mingle with the rest of the uh, uh, society, uh, mm. like-minded people. Mm. Uh, I made a lot of friends uh, joining the park run. Uh, I was able to actually get to know uh, a lot of other running friends and uh, through uh, them running events, etc. Mm. Uh, the most important thing is actually uh, uh, doing the park run. Uh, I, I, I myself used, used it as a, a speed session uh, yeah. at the end of a hard uh, uh, week. Yeah, at work and also doing uh, exercise, etc. Uh, going to park run was actually very uh, happy moment for me. It the became, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it became a ritual uh, weekend ritual for me. Uh, that's how my week, uh, weekend uh, started. Uh, yeah. Even today, uh, my weekend starts uh, with the you know park run. Uh, that uh, that actually makes my weekend uh, so happier. Yeah. So let me just uh, yeah kept that one. So park run, run, which became quite an essential part of your recovery and fitness, got you running outdoors. And once you discovered it, uh, you became, it became a ritual, a weekly thing every Saturday. Now, for the benefit of the listener, tell us how many park runs you have done by now this week. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, so um, my very first park run was in 2011 in May. Um, yeah. Uh, as of now, uh, I have gone uh, to uh, complete 535 park runs. Um, 535. Yeah, um, yeah. I completed my 500 uh, park run last December. Yeah. I was the second uh, 
500 finisher uh, in Sheffield. Uh, I think, um, yeah, there's only very few people in the UK. Uh, uh, I, I was actually awarded uh, the uh, the blue 500 t-shirt, which I proudly wear every week. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Uh, yeah. Now, uh, you told us that you had a very supportive uh, boss at work at HSBC, who himself was a marathon runner, and uh, he had a hand in encouraging you to do competitive running, racing. Uh, tell us a little bit uh, what he said and, uh, you know, how you got into you know, Yes, uh, racing. Yeah, he was, he was very uh, um, supportive and encouraging me. Uh, yeah. From the moment um, I um, returned back to work after my heart attack, he was mm -hmm. very um, understanding. Um, yeah. He actually um, made sure that uh, uh, I don't, uh, you know, stress out, uh, you know, uh, uh, at my projects. So he yeah. um, made sure um, uh, I don't work extra hours. Uh, he took me out of the um, uh, on-call uh, night support, etc. At the same yeah. time, most importantly, he uh, uh, wanted me to continue um, uh, my recovery. He yeah. uh, almost every week, we used to have one-to-one -one discussion. Uh, yeah. It was meant to be uh, about work, but end up actually talking about uh, my recovery and uh, running. Uh, so he was a very good uh, marathon runner. Uh, so, so he was the one actually pushed me into um, uh, competitive running. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he suggested that, okay, uh, Rizmi, uh, you have come a long way. You have recovered now. Uh, yeah. It was um, yeah, about a um, year after the, uh, the cardiac uh, incident I had. He said, yeah. okay, uh, well, um, uh, you, you you should sign up uh, for a 10k run and see how yeah. it goes. Initially, um, I, I was a bit uh, 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 I, I wasn't very sure what to expect out of the uh, uh, 10k. Uh, I had never taken part uh, in a competitive race. I said yeah. no, not to worry. Uh, just uh, you, you are able to run on the treadmill. Uh, you just go and do it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I signed up uh, for a 10K uh, race. Uh, yeah. At the same time, I um, did some fundraising for cancer charity, local charity here in Sheffield. Um, yeah, yeah um, that was actually uh, my very first introduction to competitive running. Right. Now, brilliant. On account of time, I'll fast forward a little bit. Uh, so that was the very first competitive running. You did a 10K race fund for the local cancer hospital and you are getting the hang of it, you are enjoying it, and then you did your first half marathon for fundraising. Tell us a little bit. Yeah, um, uh, I mean, when, when, when I did the uh, 10K, um, uh, I had no any time goals. I just uh, wanted to go and uh, uh, finish yeah. it. That, that yeah. was my uh, goal, actually, when I uh, signed up. Yeah. Um, I was quite impressed myself uh, on the timing uh, and the effort that I put in. Um, yeah. It was a huge milestone uh, in my recovery uh, to show not only um, I have come back uh, after yeah. my uh, uh, heart attack, but uh, also actually I was feeling much uh, better than before. Yeah. So, um, at the same time, um, I had uh, already started the volunteering for British Heart Foundation. Yeah. Uh, which is a uh, national charity here in UK, uh, yeah. funding uh, lots, lot of um, uh, heart-related uh, researchers. So yeah. I was actually part of the team uh, here in Sheffield. Yeah. So um, I was invited uh, uh, by the head of fundraising and voluntary manager uh, to run uh, Sheffield Half Marathon. That yeah. was my uh, very first uh, half marathon, which I uh, fondly remember. Uh, I'm sure it will. Uh, uh, I will remember uh, for my rest of my life. Yeah, special event. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you ran with the elite runners, had breakfast. Correct. With VIP, yeah. So uh, I, I mean, uh, it, uh, I, I I was treated like a VIP. I was invited uh, to have the uh, breakfast uh, before the uh, half marathon. Uh, with the uh, mayor of Sheffield and uh, uh, and the rest of the uh, head of the uh, charities. Uh, it was a very proud moment for me. Um, I mean, uh, I still remember uh, uh, the day uh, 
then i was actually escorted to the uh, uh, front of the uh, uh, start line uh, even today i don't start uh, at right in the beginning uh, right in the front of uh, the start line uh, just imagine uh, starting at uh, right in the front of the start line with the other elite runners actually yeah. i was being <laughs> i was very first Yeah. Uh, I was escorted by all the other uh, mascot, especially the uh, uh, British Art Foundation mascot. Uh, I was uh, given, you know, uh, like uh, like a hero. So you, it's fair to say that you were the poster boy for British Art Foundation. Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. For for next uh, so many years, uh, I was the poster boy of uh, the British Art Foundation. Uh, yeah. my story was uh, all over the yeah. place here yeah, in local That's newspapers story. yeah yeah uh, okay. i have some yeah. actually uh, copies yeah, somewhere uh, yeah oh, but right. uh, everyone here in sheffield knew uh, who this me is uh, and they knew my story uh, i mean uh, uh, there was nothing uh, to uh, hide for me um, yeah. as long as you know i inspire uh, many people yeah giving hope yeah. to many other people to say look at him you know he had had a heart attack with look Correct. what he yeah. doing yeah Brilliant. it's not only uh, uh, running uh, um, actually uh, volunteering with british art exactly. foundation i was able to raise uh, thousands of po- uh, pounds personally oh. um, i uh, raised a lot of pa- uh, money for british art yeah. foundation and yeah. as a team also actually we within one year i remember uh, we raised 25000 pounds uh, for the uh, uh, british art foundation funded uh, heart uh, re- uh, researchers super well done uh, yeah. now just give us a bit of a figure because you you are very good with numbers about timing as well as numbers of races for the benefit of the listener by now mm-hmm. how many half marathons have you completed and how many marathons yeah Uh, I mean, since, since I ran my first ever uh, half marathon in Sheffield, yeah. I went on to uh, enter race after race every yeah. month. Yeah. Actually, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that th- that was the actually proper introduction to uh, 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 competitive running. I would say, yeah. uh, I have gone on to run sixty-eight half marathons so far. Um, yeah. yeah. Sixty-eight, yeah, sixty-eight. Yeah, um, I signed up uh, uh, for half marathons around uh, Sheffield. Uh, that is including the Great North uh, tw- uh, eleven Great North runs. Yeah. Great, uh, Great North run is the um, world's largest half marathon. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll be running the Great North run uh, next Sunday, which is uh, less than uh, eight days now. Yeah, it will be my twelfth uh, Great North Run and probably sixty-ninth uh, or seventy-eighth half marathon. Uh, right. I stopped. I stopped counting actually after my sixtieth. Um, yeah. Uh, I had a big uh, bit of uh, uh, celebration when when I did uh, did the sixtieth. Yeah. And with my uh, uh, marathon uh, training etc., uh, my main focus was actually marathon. More than half. So you're going on to do bigger and better things now. How many exactly, marathons? Exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. I I do a uh, bit. Uh, uh, not many uh, half marathons at the moment, as I focus on uh, full marathons. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about your first marathon when and uh, where it was. My first marathon was uh, the Manchester Marathon in 2018, yeah. uh, which I finished uh, in. Three hours forty six minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I never thought that uh, I would uh, run a marathon. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I I never thought actually I will uh, get into running, let alone yeah. full, uh, running a full marathon. So running mm-hmm. a marathon was actually uh, my wildest dream. Uh, yeah. My whole idea was to just uh, uh, run and finish the marathon. But yeah. I train hard. Uh, I listen to my body. At the same time, actually, uh, uh, I, I, you know, uh, followed a training uh, program, which actually yeah. really helped me uh, to yeah. finish uh, in that time. Yeah. So you listen to the medical experts, check with them if it was okay. They gave the go. Ahead. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, I, I didn't straight away jump into uh, uh, marathon running. Uh, I didn't take 
make uh, that decision myself yeah. i consulted uh, my cardiologist before uh, i signed up and yeah. he did couple of checks uh, and he said absolutely fine you are doing really well go ahead and sign up uh, he told me uh, 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 just keep me posted how it, it's going i still uh, meet him actually when uh, i run uh, on the trails here in sheffield uh, yeah. uh, he is actually uh, so supportive and he is actually uh, so happy with my progress so far yeah so apart from being a poster boy you are also a bit of a guinea pig for heart british heart foundation research uh, yeah. correctly yeah, yeah. he yeah. he keeps saying yeah. that uh, i i wish every uh, a heart patient is uh, like you who uh, take uh, control of their own uh, life uh, who uh, t- take care of uh, their own health and well being he keeps yeah. saying that every time when i uh, so, see him yeah how many full marathons have you done by now recently uh, i have done uh, 15 full marathons so far yeah 15 that, that is including uh, i think uh, uh, three or four virtual marathons which i did during the covid pandemic oh, okay. yeah 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 uh, now there are some very famous high profile six marathons around the world and tell us a little bit about it what are they called and which ones have you done yeah uh, uh, i think you are talking about the uh, world major marathons world in major the... marathons uh, actually they are uh, most pre- prestigious and biggest marathons in the world yeah. uh, to begin with uh, it is the london yeah. uh, then boston marathon uh, yeah. chicago Tokyo, yeah. Berlin, yeah. and New York. New Out York. of six uh, world major marathons, I have completed five uh, so far. Yeah. Um, I'll be uh, running uh, New York uh, this November. Uh, yeah. That is uh, in about uh, eight weeks time. Eight weeks time. Uh, yeah. Uh, I can't wait to complete uh, uh, the uh, journey of six star uh, and having that uh, special uh, medal uh, with. Uh, the 6th star finish medal yeah i'm so yeah. Uh, excited and uh, uh, looking forward to uh, running the new york marathon in november yeah so every time you finish a marathon you get this medal and then when you can finish all the six they put in fit into a very beautiful little album uh, which you can treasure for rest of your life uh, i have a feeling that you will be the only sri lankan who has completed all the full set of major marathons and earned that accolade so i'll be looking out for you i'm really really proud of um, you uh i had to make a correction on that uh, marvin uh, i'll be the fourth person uh, for sri lankan for for sorry yeah, for sri lankan uh, uh, to complete this star journey uh, all right yeah uh, there are three uh, runners who has already completed Uh, yeah so i'll I, be the uh, fourth person but uh, uh, I, i i don't know uh, there, there's any documentary uh, evidence but i uh, i'm guessing i'll be the very first person um, uh, to complete the six star journey uh, after having a heart, uh, heart. issue no. yeah brilliant okay i stand corrected on that one and i look forward to getting the names of the other three from you sometime I'm just pushing on to on account of time. Uh, so I'm really really pleased. I hope your training is going well and you're going to smash with another record timing at the New York Marathon. Uh before we go, I have a couple of questions to to ask you. Uh as a result of this heart attack and which is a traumatic experience and a lot of people don't uh, uh, come out of it good. Uh, what did you learn about yourself? and life um that's a very good question uh, uh, f- for me actually um, having the heart attack was the uh, you know uh, as i said the wake up call yeah. i realize um, the work uh, is not the uh, important thing uh, or even uh, m- money is not uh, everything yeah. i focus on uh, when i had the heart attack i um, i had to actually reset my uh, priorities you know, yeah before my um, uh, incident work was my top most priority i used to be yeah. uh, working uh, very hard uh, yeah, but, um, yeah. the, mm. uh, the heart attack actually changed my life completely yeah, yeah. Um, uh, 
my health and well-being uh, or getting fitter uh, was actually the top most priority along with the actually uh, looking after my family yeah yeah so family uh, people health have become priority as a result correct yeah yeah and also i believe uh, uh, rishni the unknown man that lived in sheffield very few people knew about now you have lots of friends who are a bit of a celebrity and uh, that you become a lot more uh, sociable uh, person um right moving on um having got into running and fallen in with love with running and doing it regularly if someone someone you you were talking to somebody they say no 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 i'm not fit enough to get started or i haven't got the time to do running you know how would you count to that yeah um i i myself actually um, have managed to convince uh, so many uh, of my friends uh, who yeah. had never thought that uh, they they would be runner uh, yeah. they have become actually very good runners now uh, most of them actually uh, have gone into uh, run half marathon so far uh, yeah. i made sure uh, i make sure uh, they actually uh, you know take one step uh, at a time sharing my own experience uh, yes uh, my uh, so, i mean some of the mistakes that i made i make yeah. sure that uh, they don't uh, do the same mistake again uh, yeah. I, i always actually um, guide them i always yeah. tell them okay uh, start uh, small yeah for, 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 for some people actually who couldn't run i told yeah. them okay let uh, start walking first that's how yeah. i uh, start uh, got into running yeah uh, walk every day uh, yeah. start uh, walking 20 minutes 30 minutes gradually yeah. after three or four months uh, uh, there will be a moment uh, you will uh, feel okay you can walk for 45 minutes then so what, uh, what you say is if you, if you can't run start walking and do it slowly and build up and right, yeah. you encourage and share from your own experience and guide them so what right, you're saying yeah, the, anybody can yeah. run and running is good yeah, yeah. You, you cannot uh, build fitness overnight it has to be built uh, gradually step yeah. one step at a time the step yeah. one st- step at a time so at the t- same time uh, you have a goal or uh, set a challenge yourself for example yeah. like uh, uh, up uh, he and she filled the park run uh, uh, runs two laps so instead yeah. of doing two laps just uh, go and do one lap it, one it's lap. okay uh, you you don't complete the, the 5k uh, complete uh, uh, two laps just do yeah. two laps there are actually people uh, uh, who started doing uh, one lap and now yeah. they do uh, the five uh, two two laps 5k uh, run They, they have managed to bring down their uh, time uh, yeah. they are so happy actually uh, they have started uh, the other other thing is actually i should say uh, never compare with others yeah uh, yeah that's that's the biggest mistake uh, many people do uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, just look at uh, what you do uh, yeah. listen to your own body compete uh, against yourself rather than anybody else absolutely compete yourself uh, rather than you know, just looking at uh, okay. others it's okay to be inspired by uh, others uh, yeah. uh, you know taking uh, lessons from others but never yeah. compare with someone else's uh, a, times or results yeah that's a very good one be inspired by others but don't compete with others compete against yourself correct yeah like that one okay Listen, is there anything else you would like to add, uh, particularly uh, for the benefit of young uh, people, particularly in IT, who work long hours like you you do or you used to do? Uh, what sort of advice would you give them? Yeah, um, uh, actually, uh, you know, I mean, uh, we invest in our uh, material lives, but not so much when it comes to our own well-being. Yeah. Um, when i was uh, young uh, i'm talking about 20s and 30s as i said earlier uh, i never uh, thought about uh, health and well being yeah. uh, always uh, thought about work it's okay uh, to uh, 
build your uh, career that that's yeah. the time actually you think about uh, mostly about your career changing jobs working extra hours etc yeah. that's fine but at the same time you also actually uh, uh, must find work life balance Uh, here, in, here in the UK, actually, uh, at workplace, uh, they encourage for us to, uh, uh, you know, think about uh, the work-life balance, which means yeah. that actually, life is not all about work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's okay to uh, actually go out and enjoy with your friends, but at the same time, uh, you have to set, uh, uh, you know, uh, side time, find time, uh, and invest in your health. uh from early uh stage i would say yeah don't wait until uh something happen uh, yeah yeah uh, if if you actually uh, focus on uh, health and well being at very yeah. early uh, stage i'm sure uh, you will have a, a yeah beautiful um, career as well as you know yeah. um, good health yeah So prevention is better than prevention cure. is better oh, otherwise we um, i would say actually uh, pre prehab is better than uh, uh, going through uh, you know post uh, event rehabilitation yeah thank you prisni thank you much so much for sharing your uh, passion about running and uh, sharing your life experience for the benefit of others Now, during this episode, we saw how Rishni, the workaholic, following his life-changing experience, re-channeled his energies, reorganized his priorities, and took up running as part of his recovery, and ended up running half marathons and marathons, and raising a lot of money in aid of charities. How he achieved better work-life balance, we have seen, and in the process. what he has learned he has shared with us about himself and about marathons uh what he has achieved so far is very impressive uh rishni thank you for your time and sharing this with us good luck with your forthcoming races the great yeah. and that's moving thanks for having me my pleasure bye bye that's bye bye